In 1918, a revolution broke out in Germany, which was defeated in World War I. He established the Weimar Republic, the first democratic country in German history, where he took responsibility for the defeat and toppled the monarchy. The Weimar Republic was the common name of the German Republic, which was established in 1919 after the First World War and ended in 1933 with the establishment of Hitler's Nazi regime. It was named because the Weimar Constitution, which stipulates the skeleton, was adopted in the National Assembly convened in Weimar. The Weimar Constitution was the most democratic constitution of the time, and unlike the existing Bismarck Constitution, it guaranteed the basic rights of the people, such as sovereignty, common elections, and social security systems. In 1929, the US-derived economic panic spread to Germany, causing a surge in unemployment and a massive deficit in the state coffers, which led to the collapse of Mueller's cabinet in 1930. Subsequently, moderate conservative supporters or moderate supporters turned to supporters of the Nazi party, and even the military, management, capitalists, and middle class supported the Nazi party. Eventually, in 1933, President Hindenburg appointed Hitler as prime minister, establishing the Nazi regime, and the Weimar Republic collapsed after 14 years. Principles of Economics How Markets Work Principles of Firm Behavior Principles of Income Distribution and Frontiers of Economics Principles of National Economy How Money and Exchange Rates Work How Economic Fluctuations and Economic Policy Work Translated into six languages and exported to the world The people of the world enjoy economics. The hyperinflation that took place in Weimar Republic of Germany was a well-known event in history. In October 1923 alone, prices rose by 29,500%. The exchange rate was 49,000 marks per dollar on January 31, 1923. It rose to 25.2 billion mark per dollar on October 31 of the same year. This led the German government to print 100 trillion mark bills and mint 1 trillion mark coins. It is said that people ordered multiple glasses of beer at once as the prices rose much faster than the pace at which beer becomes stale. The value of the empty bottles of liquor was higher than what a diligent man could save. Laborers were at first paid wages once a month, then once a week, and then once a day, and then twice a day. As soon as they were paid, they ran to shops to make purchases since all their notes quickly became worthless. Hyperinflation occurs when too much money is printed and people lose confidence in money. During the Paris Peace Conference following World War I, the Allied forces imposed 132 billion marks on the defeated Germany as a compensation for civilian damages caused during the war. This led Germany to print too much money, and this brought about hyperinflation. Keynes opposed the excessive amount of compensation imposed on Germany, warning that it would have an effect that was contrary to what had been intended. But it was to no avail. Later, the Weimar Republic came to an end. And with the emergence of Hitler, the world was plunged into the tragedy of the Second World War. World history would have been different if the Allied powers had listened to Keynes. The price of a daily newspaper in Germany is 0.3 mark in January 1921. But in just two years, it soared to 7,000 marks in November 1922. 
it jumped more than 200 million times. The prices of other goods in Germany rose as much as the newspaper. It was the worst inflation that happened anywhere in the world. Inflation was quite frequent in the United States but never as severe as the one experienced by Germany in the 1920s. A high inflation entails high social costs, which makes keeping price increase in control one of the most important priorities of any government. What causes inflation then? Excessive or persistent increase in prices are almost always caused by an increase in the money in circulation. In early 1920s, prices in Germany rose three times per month. So did the quantity of money in circulation. The US had a similar experience although it was not as severe. In the 1970s, there was steep rise in prices due to rapid increase in the quantity of money. Prices have been stable recently since there has been a slower growth in the quantity of money.